Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to God. We'd like to welcome you to the first uh, official opening of the Music and Art Center at St. Tegan's Monastery and Seminary. Uh, it's kind of an epic moment that, uh, to have this opportunity to be in this space. Uh, remodeled as it is, it's very different looking than it used to be. Uh, and we're help, uh, grateful to all those who helped make that possible, especially uh, many people who donated. And also uh, uh, Father John Parrish, especially, who was able to uh, uh, renovate and, and kind of move some things around so that this would work so nicely. So uh, we thank God for all of those people who helped with that. And we'd like to also thank those who are uh, continuing to, to utilize this space in order to enact the vision that I've had for so many years. You know, so long ago, uh, we used to have choir rehearsal in the old bookstore, which is now the dining room, which was, well, at th those days, it was kind of moldy, it was old, it had this uh, kind of checkerboard tile down there, it was, you know, like, like a haunted house, it was just not the most, it wasn't the most inspiring place to, 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 to make music and to, to create art, so uh, this space is kind of what we envisioned for continuing that vision of being able to, uh, is there like an echo going on? Aha, uh -huh. it's me, in the past. <laughs> Somehow I'm in the past and I'm talking to the people online. That's what I'm hearing. Maybe it's my phone. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's coming from there. It was my phone. <laughs> talking to people in the present. <laughs> Very Star Trek. <laughs> so anyways, I'd like to welcome you. This is the first actual uh, encounter or experience of, of concert performance in this space, so we're, we're very glad to welcome you to this new world that we're living in. Uh, one where we're trying to put the music and the art of the church in the primary position, just like the theology is. Uh, the theological vision is expressed most uh, clearly and most perfectly in the art of the church. It's a direct correlation, there's a direct um, contact between those two realities, the theology, and then those, uh, those words about God that are either sung or that are depicted on the icon. So uh, this place is very special. We want to especially thank the uh, music staff who, who, are, who are now manning the music department here at the uh, monastery and the seminary. Of course, uh, Benedict Sheehan, uh, Maria Talia Sheehan, uh, Anastasia, uh, Paul, and is there anybody else that I think we're getting? So many. so many other people, but those are the main ones who are running the new music center. So we'll be doing a workshop here next weekend, and we invite uh, those who are watching to come to, to visit us. Uh, if you'd like to, for the workshop, you can sign up on uh, St. Tikhon's musicprogram.org. So, uh, so again, we're, we're, we want to welcome you. This is kind of a, a, a first and it's a great opportunity for us to, to have uh, many of you who are very musically talented to come up and to, to share with us your abilities and to perform this evening uh, to the glory of God. So uh, welcome, thank you for coming, uh, we're glad that you're with us and we thank God especially uh, for this great opportunity to be in such a beautiful place and to be able to sing to the glory of God. So Maria, uh, please come up and uh, tell us about what's going to be happening this evening. Thank you.
sing O Che Sate Di Piagami, which is in a, a 1683 aria by Alessandro Scarlatti. And um, I have the lyrics. It's really it's really fun translation. Um, you know, it's one of these one of these feel good like summer songs. Uh, oh, stop wounding me! Oh, leave me to die! I so grateful, merciless, more than ice and more than marble, cold and depth to my sufferings. So it's, it's, it really just kind of hits you in the heart. That's a bullet jump. It's a bit happier than the one you sang in the, you know, earlier. Right. Yeah. So yeah, we're kind of trending upwards. Um, so, yeah. I, I've connected with this song much more so than the other the previous two have sung. Um, which was uh, like a, an Irish folk song and then an African American spiritual. Uh, I love this song. Um, unfortunately, I've been struggling with a bit of a cold, so I'm going to do my best tonight um, just to pray really hard that uh, I can actually get through both verses. <laughs>
Koshka Rachel Hill, and it's my husband, Father Michael. And this is a poem that I wrote a while ago, and he so kindly uh, composed and arranged it into a musical piece for me. And um, it came out of a little flurry of poetry composition with my children. They were in the middle of the poetry month at school, and came home and spread their books and papers out everywhere, and everybody's feet were in the air and pencils were flying. And I was just, I, I loved their sense of wonder and fascination with the beauty that surrounds us. And I just wanted to capture a little bit of that myself. Um, so I wrote a poem, and I'd like to dedicate this to their teacher, uh, Margot Davidson. Um, because that evening, with everybody on the floor working away, is just one small example of the kind of beauty that she is, has inspired in our family. And I think that's a big part of what all of this is about, just all of us not losing our sense of wonder at everything that's around us. And so each of us bringing that wonder here and sharing it with one another. Or, 
or interwoven uh, meters, um, I call it polymeters, uh, of which I'm very grateful for uh, Brother Paul and Anastasia um, obliging me with uh, some of these very irregular and complex uh, and overlapping meters. The text is by Robert Burns. Uh, the text goes, O'er my love, yon lilac fair, with purple blossoms to the spring, and I a bird to shelter there when wearied on my little wing. Oh, would how I would mourn when it was torn <laughs> by autumn wild and winter rude. Oh, but how would I sing when on wanton wing youthful May its bloom renewed.
is, and his mercy is upon them that fear him from generation to generation. And of course, I am singing with my lovely wife, Lydia.
Myself to you since the beginning of time. I want to set as you as a seal upon my heart and my arm. I want to delight your sorrowful eye. Forget now, O soul, the fear and the pain that you had to suffer. On my left side you shall rest, and my right shall kiss you. The soul then responds, My beloved is mine, and I am his. Nothing shall separate this love. I will feed on heaven's roses with you where abundant joy and bliss will be found. Ich reite 
you, but I wonder what I've been doing with all my time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm reminded of a great show from when our children were little called The Veggie Tales. <laughs> please forgive me for bringing it down a notch. <laughs> But in the Veggie Tales, there was this great production, a great silly song with Larry, where they were going to have a multimedia stereophonic event. <laughs> and in the middle of that multimedia stereophonic event, one of the people who was watching said, This isn't a multimedia stereophonic event, this is a slide projector and a bed sheet. <laughs> I am the slide projector and the bed sheet. <laughs> I'm somewhat embarrassed to be here just because already, and you know, after sitting for a while, I fiddled with intertwining. I can't even say what you do, Father Michael, but it was beautiful. It's all about singing and Rachmaninoff. I mean, I'm the opening act, uh, but somehow I find myself in the chiastic middle. So, this, I, I am a comic relief. written, I don't know when, uh, could have been the 60s or 70s, it was also written by a man named John, curiously enough, well, adapted by yours truly, I mean, I can take that much credit, and I can tell you this much, I won't tell you anything except for this much, and then you can figure it out, the autobiography of the man who wrote this song has a curious history. Once upon a time, a famous Orthodox priest was asked, would you please consider ghostwriting the autobiography of the man who wrote this song? And he said, sure. And then he was flown to a Caribbean island where he sat on the beach and met the author of this song and listened to his whole life story and then wrote that book, Ghost Wrote It. I'll tell you the name of the priest, Father Peter Gilchrist. Well, you wonder why I always dress in black. Why you really see bright colors on my back. And why does my appearance seem to have a somber tone? There's a reason for the casting I have on. I wear the black for the poor and beaten down. Living in a hopeless, hungry side of town. I wear it for the prisoner who is paying for his crime. But he'll repent with the right use of his time. I wear the black for those who never read. Or listen to the word that Jesus said about the way into the kingdom 
make a few things right. Only at Pasta will I wear a cassette white. I'd love to wear the white one every day. And tell the world that everything's okay. But I'll try to carry off a little darkness on my back until the Lord returns. I'm a man in
song, Big Moon, was written by Robert Schumann, Schumann as a wedding present for his wife, Clara, who was an extraordinary person. She was a concert pianist. She was raised by uh, her divorced dad, interestingly, um, and was a concert pianist uh, before she was 10. It just so happened that she was, I think, about eight. She was giving a performance uh, at which the 17-year-old Robert Schumann came and was blown away um, and went home to his mom and said, Mom, I can't study law anymore. I have to be a pianist like this girl I saw. And uh, a few years later, I think uh, Clara was 21 when they married, um, it was, this, this, this song has a, a kind of a lot of intensity of emotion. Because their wedding was kind of fraught, uh, Clara's father sued them to make it so that they wouldn't marry. But he lost, and they married. And some of the intensity of all of that relationship uh, got funneled into this really beautiful song, Big Moon, which is roughly translated a dedication. And it says, you are my soul, you are my heart, you are my rapture, oh, you my pain. My heaven, oh, excuse me, you my world in which I live, my heaven you to which I aspire, you oh, my grave into which my grief forever I consign. You are my repose, you are peace, you are bestowed on me from heaven. Your love for me gives me my worth, your eyes transfigure me in mine. You raise me lovingly above myself, my guardian angel, my better self. <laughs> no big deal.
is a song about two lovers who steal an hour in the middle of the day to go lie in a meadow of flowers and enjoy the beauty that their love imbues to everything around.
the poem is one from a set of four by poet Pablo Neruda, four love poems, um, set to music in 1995. In my imagination, the text is a, um, a dying benediction of a spouse to a partner. And um, just so you can all hear this poem, because it's so lovely, not one of the Spanish speakers in the room, but I'd like to read it to you. When I die, I want your hands on my eyes. I want the light and the wheat of your beloved hands to pass over me one more time their freshness, to feel the softness that changed my destiny. I want you to live while I, sleeping, wait for you. I want your ears to continue hearing the wind, that you smell the aroma of the sea that we love together, and continue walking the sand that we walk on. I want what I love to continue alive, and you, whom I loved and sang above everything because of this, to continue flourishing, full flower, so that you can reach everything my love arranges for you, so that in my shadow, so that my shadow can ride in your hair, so that in this way everyone can know the reason.
in this song, you, you hear about a Cossack walking through the field through the, in the steppes, and there's an eagle flying overhead, and uh, the song is warning the eagle not to fly too low to the ground, too close to the ground, and for the Cossack not to walk too close to the shore. Chopin, ballad number four in F minor.